you're like me, you have creative assistants inside OpenAI Playground. You recently heard about new shiny models like Cloud3 and Mistral Large. You heard that they are outperforming GPT-4 on some benchmarks, and you might be feeling a bit frustrated as you can't use them for your assistance. So guess what? I've been on the search of a solution that allows me to run my assistance with other models as well. And I found this game changer solution called Tasking AI. Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm Donna, an AI specialist based in Sydney. And in this video, I will show you a new tool that has just been released called Tasking AI. Tasking AI is like the swift army knife for creating assistance that allows you to switch between different models and offer a lot of other features. To demonstrate how awesome this tool is, what feature it offers, and why you should consider using it instead of OpenAI Playground, I'm going to create three assistants. One that transforms a news article into a Twitter thread, a second assistant that gets all of the latest movies playing at the cinema and use an API, and finally an assistant that answers questions about any documents, and in my case, the transcripts of my YouTube video. The magic of Tasking AI is that it does not require a lot of coding experience and you don't even need to install anything locally as they have a cloud-based platform. Let's get into it. The first thing you need to do is to go to tasking.ai and register. Then you can go to the Tasking AI console and click on new project. And here I will say Tasking AI demo and then I will say demo showcasing Tasking AI. Now I can click on confirm and directly click on the project to access it. Testing AI is an open source project, so it also supports local deployment. You can go to the GitHub repository and install it with Docker. Now let's explore the product and create our first assistant. The first assistant is going to be easy and straightforward. I want to build an assistant that receives a web link of a news article and creates a Twitter thread for me that is ready to post. The first step for that is to create a model. For that, I can directly go to the left tab and click on models. Now I can click on new models right here at the top right and I can see all of the different providers that I can use. In this case, I will simply use OpenAI, but note that you can also use Mistral or for example, Close from Anthropic by just selecting them here. Let's click on OpenAI, click on Next. When selecting the different models here, you can see their different properties. So here it says the provider, the type, which is chat completion, as you also have text embeddings, as you can see here. This is used for knowledge retrieval. And also you can see the different properties of these models. So in this case, you can see that this one supports function calling that will allow us to use tools to use APIs and plugins. And then there is streaming and also the input token limit and the output token limit. So in this case, I will use GPT 3.5 Turbo and I can click on confirm. Here I can put the model name. So in this case, GPT 3.5. Then in credential, I need to add the API keys. You need to know that all of the different API key put inside Tasking AI are safely secured and stored using encryption. Now I can click on confirm right here and I can see here that it's created. In my assistant, I also need a tool to be able to fetch the content of the news article from the URL. For that, I can click on tools on the left here. There are two types of tools, plugins and action. Plugins are pre-confer action that simplify tasks. In this case, I will add a plugin and I will come back to action on the next assistant. So to add a plugin, I simply click here on new plugin and here I can see all of the different plugins available. And on the right, you can see the name of the plugin and also the different tools that it contains. In my case, I want to use a web reader to allow me to read a web page. So now I can click on next. Here I have a summary of all of the different parameters that it requires. This is pretty useful to have an idea of what it's doing behind the hood. And in this case, I can see that it needs a URL and that's it. There are other plugins that might require an API key that I will have to precise here, but in this case, it doesn't. Now I can click on confirm at the bottom right and I can see my plugin here. Now it is time to create my assistant. So I will go to the tab on the left on assistance and I can click on new assistant. Here I will have to put a name, a description, a language model that I used. So in this case, just the one I created, which is GPT 3.5. So let's add a name. So the name will be tweet generator. 
and the description will be takes the URL of an article and transform it into a tweet thread. Now I can add a prompt template, transform the following article into a sequence of Twitter posts, create a coherent thread. The first tweet in the thread would simply summarize the content of the article. Additional thread will start with an emoji and summarize one aspect talked about the article. The user must provide the URL of the article that needs to be transformed into a Twitter thread. Then there is the memory, which is about if the, the assistant ability to retain and use information from previous interaction during a conversation to maintain continuity and relevance in responses. Here I have the choice between zero, which means that there is absolutely no context memory, naive, which means that every single message in the chat will be remembered, which is really useful for customer support chatbots, for example. And finally, there is message window that allows me to specify a number of max messages and max token. Naive will be the best because I can simply create a new chat every time I want to add a new article and generate a tweet. Then I have the choice here to add integrations where I can add retrieval. We will see that in the last part of this tutorial. And finally, tools which allows me to decide between plugins and action. In my case, I just created a plugin, so I'm going to add it here. And here I will add my web reader. And here I have to select exactly which function of that plugin I want to add to the assistant. Now I can click on confirm and also confirm right here. Now my assistant is created and I can open it into the playground by clicking here. Here I can create a new chat. I can directly say the following prompt, generate a Twitter thread based on this article and I put the link of the article. This is an article about how OpenAI and Figure partners to create a humanoid robot to talk and complete tasks. Then once this is here, I can click on send and generate and it will automatically generate the thread. As we can see here, I have my Twitter thread that is created and I can click here on tools and see what's going on under the hood. I can see that there is an input here, which is the URL of the article and the output, which is the whole content of the article. This allows me to see that the tool is actually working. Here I have my Twitter thread and here I am. I have my first assistant. Before jumping into the second assistant, if you like this video so far, please leave a thumb up and subscribe to the channel. My second assistant will display the movies that are currently playing at the theaters. So here I have my second assistant, which is movie assistant. And if I click here on edit, just to see the different parameters, I have the name here, movie assistant. I have the description, which is movie assistant have multiple key features, which is returning the title of the movies that are now playing. Then I added my language model. So here I use the same as before GPT 3.5. And finally, I say here, you will return the title of the movies that are now playing. Then in the memory, I don't need any memory, so I set up to zero. Here I have my new chat and I will directly paste the following. What are the movies played right now at the movie theaters? If I click on send and generate, it will simply answer me that it cannot provide real time information about movie, showtime or current playing movies. This is because GPT 3.5 Turbo is offline and do not have access to any external APIs. That's where the action enters the game. So this is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to create an action that allows the assistant to have access to the movie API. To do that, I can simply go to tools and action. Here, as you can see, I already created an action. We will see right now how to do exactly that. The first step is to find an API, an API endpoint and the structure of the response. An API is a contract between you, the client and the server. Kind of like a legal contract where you say what information you need to create, get, update or delete information. Note that you can also use this API to post information to add element to a database, for example. Another action I could do would be to add the list of now playing movies to a database, for example. In my case, I will use this API from TMDB, which has this specific endpoint here that returns all of the movies that are now playing at the cinema. So I'm going to use this API documentation here, pull it into ChatGPT in order to generate this open API specification with the following prompt that I have here. I will provide you with an API specification. Your job is to convert it into open API specifications. 
you will pay attention to include all the information and return it as a correct formatted JSON. You will not forget to add an operation ID. I specifically add this one because ChatGPT tends to forget about it and then it would not work. So this really, this is really, really important to add an operational ID, otherwise it won't work uh, on the OpenAPI specification schema on Tasking AI. So then I add an example here of the World Time API. So this is pretty long and then I will copy, this is the API request. And what I will add here is the details about what is the API request. And in order to find that, I can go here and I select HTTP as language. And then I'm simply gonna take this and copy it here, right? Here I say, and this is the response. So here I clicked on try it, and then I can directly take all of this and paste it there as the response. And, and that's it. So then when I press enter, it will directly generate all of the things that I need. Then I can directly click here on copy code. I can go to my schema here on my tool action and paste it directly. The next thing I need to do is to add here the bearer token. This is for security reason. So I can find that when I go here on the header here. So I can see that this is like an access token. So I can directly get it from here, copy it and go here and paste it. As we can see, this is the same, starting with EY, finishing by R0, this is EY and it finished by R0. So this is exactly that token that I directly paste here. And then I click on confirm to, to just create it. Now I can directly go to my assistant here. I can go to the edit button and I can add my action. So in this case, I added get now playing movies. So I can directly go here, click on confirm and finally confirm again. Now my tool is added so I can directly open it into the playground right here. And here I'm gonna ask again the same question. So I'm gonna create a new chat and I can directly paste the query which is what are the movies played right now at the movie theaters. And I can click on send and generate. And as you can see right now, it will call the tool as you can click here, see what's the input and what's the output. So here we can see that it gets all of the information that it needs. Now it shows the movies that are currently playing at the theaters. And this is exactly what I wanted to do. In order to use tools, you will need to have a model that supports function calling. Now we can build an assistant that can interact with any APIs. And there are a lot of different use cases here where you can use the Google API, the YouTube API, the Twitter API, the LinkedIn API. There are hundreds of thousands of different APIs that you can use. But that's not all. Tasking AI also offer an option to create an assistant that can answer questions about your documents. So let's dive into this right now. For my last assistant, I will create two models from Mistra. One that is gonna be for the chat completion and the other one from the embedding model. So let's do it. Let's go to click new model, then I select Mistral AI, then I click on next. And here I will select first uh, Mistral 7B, let's say, and click on confirm. Now here I will put Mistral, Mistral 7B and I will copy my API keys here. Now I can click on confirm and here I am, I created Mistral 7B. And now I will create my second model. So I click here on Mistral AI, I click on next and I will select this one and this will be used for the document retriever. So I will use Mistral embed. So I can click here on confirm. This I will say Mistral embed. Here I paste my API key again, which can be the same or a different one. And now I have my two different models. I can go back to my assistant and here I already created it. So let's see what is in there. The name is Donna AI. The description is answering questions based on Donna's YouTube channel video content. I Here I will select my language model. So I select Mistral 7B, confirm. And here I have my prompt. So the prompt is, you are an assistant for question answering tasks. Use the following pieces of retrieved context to answer the question. If you don't know the answer, just say that you don't know. Use three sentences maximum and keep the answer concise. You will only answer based on the context provided and not on your own acquired knowledge through LLM training. If you don't know the answer to the question or are not 100% sure, you will simply state that you do not know the answer. Now that this is done, I can go to the retrieval part and let's see what. 
So here I have to select my collection. I don't have any collection yet. So I click here on new collection and this will be Donna, Donna's YouTube channel transcripts. So here I will paste all of the transcript of all of my videos. I select the embedding model. So that will be Mistral embed that I just created before. I can click on confirm. I click here on confirm. And now I can select my collection right here. So I actually have to go and add data to that collection. So I will click on confirm. And if I go now to retrieval part here, here I have multiple actions and I will click here on record. And here I can simply add a new record. So here is the name of the record and the text content. So let's take one of my YouTube video, which is why Mistral AI LLM will overtake ChatGPT. So I can paste that title directly here. And here I will want to paste the transcript. So for that, I have to click here. I have to go down click on show transcript. Then I go here, toggle timestamp. And now I can directly copy all of this here. And this will basically copy the whole transcript. So now I can click on control C or command C if you're on Mac and I can paste it directly here. When I will click on confirm here, it will automatically create the chunk and use the Mistral embed. This is not free, but the cost is really low. So I can click on confirm. And now, as you can see, this is part of my collection. If I leave this, if I come back here, I can see the chunks. So here I can see the different chunks. The first one is the name here, why Mistral AI will overtake ChatGPT, and then it's all of the different chunks. Now that I have all of that, I can go back to my playground and, and I can ask the question. So here I will select Dona AI as my assistant and I can directly create a new chat. Why is Mistral AI better than ChatGPT? I can send and generate. So now here is, we can see that it used the retrieval and the output was based on the different chunks of the collection and it automatically generated an answer based on that. What we can do now is if we go back to the assistant, we go back to Dona AI and we edit it. Let's remove this collection and see what happens. So if I confirm and go back again in the playground and if I ask again the same question, as you can see, it will say, I'm an assistant designed to help answer questions, but I cannot compare the merits of Mistral and ChatGPT directly from the context provided. So here he didn't have the context, so it wasn't able to generate any answer. That's pretty cool, isn't it? But that's not it. Tasking AI also has a Python client SDK that you can use, and this will allow you to run the model assistants that you created on the cloud and run them programmatically. And to use the client SDK, the first things I need to do is to create an API key. So for that, I go here on the left on API keys, new API key. And here I will say tasking AI client. I can confirm and then I directly get the value of my API key here. So I can click here on show, copy it. And once this is done, I can go to my Visual Studio code. Here I am in Visual Studio code and I imported the client SDK. So as you can see here, I'm importing tasking AI. And here I have the ID of my assistant that I can copy directly from tasking AI. I can instantiate my assistant and then I can also instantiate a chat. So here I will put the assistant ID in order to do that. And now I have my chat object. And after that, I can create a message and add it to the chat. So here I will decide which assistant ID and which chat it is. And the content of the message will be the link of the news article of OpenAI. I'm using the first assistant that I created that transform an article into a Twitter thread. So here I can add my message. And finally, I can call generate message with the chat ID and the assistant ID. And as you can see here, I'm just printing it. So let's see what this does. The first thing I need to do before running the code is to run export to export the API key. So here, this is what I'm going to do. So this is what I'm going to do here. Export tasking AI API key with the API key that I got from before. I press enter and then I can just run the project. And here you can see the message returned by the assistant. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a specific video to dive deeper into how to run assistance from tasking AI in the code. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.